But so I went in and I said, hey, you know I can close. I went to my broker that sold me the other two properties, right? And I went and I said, go get it. Please help me, help me, help me, help me. I want it, go get it. And um, he jumped in and he says, unfortunately, some other knucklehead from New Jersey just put it under contract. That's what happened. Guy from New Jersey, another guy from New Jersey put it under contract. They were asking like 6.6, 6.7 million, okay? My guy came, this guy from New Jersey, I don't know who he was, but he came in and did his due diligence, like his inspections and stuff like that, and tried to retrade the owner, meaning like tried to come in and say, hey, I was just kidding about that price. I want to buy it for X. His retrade was like 1.5 million less than what his buy price was. That's an insult. Just back out of the deal, man. Don't even retrade it, right? So he tried to retrade him for 1.5 million and tried hard to negotiate it, and it didn't happen. So the owners, the owner told him to go pound sand. You know, probably said something a little different than that. <laughs> but so I get a call from my broker saying, "Hey, listen, the Jersey guy just fell through. They're going to put it back on LoopNet in 24 hours. What do you want to do?" And I said, "Send in a letter of intent. I'm buying a plane ticket." Right. And so he did, turned in a letter of intent. They delayed putting it on LoopNet just so to see what we would do. I got on a plane, I got on an airplane, and I flew down here to the, um, what was the name? I, I guess it was on, no, you know what's right out here? There used to be an Applebee's out right out here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, is that that Applebee's? Mm -hmm. We sat there, okay? So we sat at that. <laughs> Pints of properties, right? So we sat out. We sat out there at that Applebee's uh, for three and a half hours. Okay, this guy's a local. Uh, he's a local doctor. Okay, the doctor's on one end. You know, I'm sitting next to him. His business partner. I'm, I wasn't sure who this guy was. He was like his bodyguard or whatever. But his business partner. The guy showed up in a beat up pickup truck. I was kind of like whatever. So he sits on this end. He's got overalls on. And, and everything like that. And he just sits on that end of the table and my broker just kind of entertains him while I talk to the guy who's really running the show, right? So I talk to my guy, the doctor guy, he's gotta be the one that funded this whole thing with his own money, right? So I, I talk to this dude and we're just, we start going and he starts telling me about how he loves to hunt and starts telling me about growing up in Fayetteville and you know, I of course pulled up, my father's from Fayetteville too and he went to, he's a, you know, he's a bulldog and went to the high school, da da you know? And, you know, and we told stories, and I just sat and listened to him, talk and talk and talk, and then talk and talk and talk, and he talked for three and a half hours. <laughs> and then finally, we get to the point where we're like, you're here, we're here. Can we just meet in the middle? Okay? And for the first time ever, he goes and looks down to the guy at the end of the table in the overalls, right? And the guy in the overall goes, <laughs> So I'm talking to the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, who the fuck is this guy? Hey, my brother, can we switch seats? Can I sit next to that guy? So we get out in the parking lot, and the overalls guy gets in his pickup truck and drove off. Like, like, no joke, like a 1925, like a, like a 1980s, you know, Fred Sanford pickup truck, right? Drives off, and I look at my broker, and I'm like, who the hell is that guy? And he goes, He's a local farmer though. He's got like 6,000 acres of uh, soybeans, 10,000 acres of corn, 2,000 hogs. He goes hunting with Zach Brown, you know, like, like, oh, that's the guy. So I had the mouth, this guy had the money, right, you know? So, okay, that's what it was. And it turns out that was the mouth, this guy was the money, and it is what it is. And so we ended up uh, closing the deal with the mouth and the money, and, uh, but just, the bottom line to this story, guys, is always know who you're talking to. And but you do respect everybody, and if you find out you're in front of like someone who's not a real decision maker, give them respect. But as quickly as you can, get in front of the one that's really cutting the check. Okay? Um, so we bought the property from these guys for the same price they bought it for seven years ago. Nice. Right? With the market doing this, we bought it for that. Okay? Right? Another reason why we love Fayetteville, by the way, is because Fayetteville has a phenomenal equation when it comes to the rent on what you can get for property yes. here versus what the purchase price yes. is. Okay? Yes. On Bigger Pockets, we talk a lot about the 1% rule. 1% rule is not active here. You guys can normally get a 2% rule. Okay? We bought that property for $30,000. A big multi you can. We bought that property for $30,000 a unit. Okay? It's, uh, their average rent when we bought it was $550. Okay, 30 grand, 550. It's a good equation. 
Okay. Now, I know this market is going up. Things are changing. That doesn't that doesn't mean you guys need to go invest somewhere else. You know, there's still good deals to be had. I think. So, all right. So you guys just closed on your like. Let's let's fast forward a bit. So you guys just did everything Matt told you to do. Okay. <laughs> right. And you listen to Matt, and you're the hunter, and he's the brain, and you're the money, and you're the hammer, and you guys just closed on your first deal. Okay. And here's the thing, a lot of things, and if you guys, are you guys Facebook friends with other people that buy multifamily? Yes. Okay, right, that have bought multifamily, I am. It's just because I'm, I'm in the business, I guess. But like, I see people that are just like, boom, we just closed on a multifamily property, huh? Look at this, drop the mic, I get to go home, where's my million bucks, right? Here's the thing, when you guys buy out these properties, the work has not even started yet. You guys think it has, but buying the deal is the easy part. Like making the deal work and bringing it to fruition, bringing it to a point of profitability is actually the hard part, right? So we're going to talk for the next part.